care of them when they grow old, and I would not even take care of my own parents. They would wish right on my face if I could be transformed into their grandson. And I can't tell you all now how much, how much that hurt me. What about a son? Almost all relatives and neighbors who came to visit us wouldn't leave without asking that question to my parents. Don't you want a brother to play with? My parents always tried to avoid them, telling them that they were happy with me. I am here on this stage with my untold story, but I honestly share with you all that I am not the author of this age-long tale. Yes, yes definitely I would like to tag it as an ancient story getting rooted till today, but I am unknown to the designer of this plot. However, I affirm this is my story too. I'm one of the inflected characters of this terrifying tale. Moreover, I am not alone. Along with me, more than the half of the population of this country and millions of others living in other parts of the world are the victimized characters of this plot. What about a son? Almost all relatives and neighbors who came to visit us wouldn't leave without asking that question to my parents. Okay, that was fine, but that's not all they asked. They kept on insisting and advising my parents for bearing our son. Yes, for bearing our son. They even provoked asking me, don't you want a brother to play with? My parents always tried to avoid them, telling them that they were happy with me. However, they never got satisfied with that answer. They even used to satire my parents with various conservative beliefs and dogmas. When all of this would be happening, I would be sitting and staring at them with these big eyes without me getting noticed, of course, thinking seriously about all of this just because my parents don't have a son, really? As a very small and young child, I would think how stupid my parents were, that they didn't have a son at all. But as I grew up, I came to realize that this was a much-practiced social evil of gender discrimination. The rural people, who didn't even know how to turn on the tap at my house properly, would surely elaborate the importance of a son compared to a daughter. They were well versed in discriminating between sons and daughters. My father, who came from a remote village of Bajura district of the far western region, had to wash his hands of these people. What to talk about others? My own grandparents, my very own grandparents, were so biased that I could feel their much biased behavior between my cousin brother and I. People around would make fun of my father. The cause was I, his only one female child. I could obviously see my grandparents showing their affection towards my cousin brother more than me in various aspects. They behaved with me as if I was not their own and only a guest who would soon get married and become someone else's property. While even distributing food items their first priority would, of course, be my cousin brother. They had the mindset that he would take care of them when they grow old, and I would not even take care of my own parents. They would wish right on my face if I could be transformed into their grandson. And I can't tell you all now how much, how much that hurt me. Sometimes I would feel I would not have been born at all 
and sometimes I would get enraged by their behavior and think that I would never be able to respect them as they were negating my existence as a daughter right into my eyes. Yes, I have read Madame Curie. I've heard the story of Eleanor Roosevelt. I love Malala, but I can't share them all with my grandparents because they rarely understand. So I began expressing my feelings in my diary. One day, my father happened to read my diary. Then he read it out to my grandparents. They fell to tears. They were delighted with my determination that I can do everything a son can do. Am I not equally capable and confident as the boys of my age? I am. A piece of writing of my diary lived the plot of this story today. Now, I want all grandparents of all female children like me change the way they think. I write my diary, I compose new articles, and I share my story so that the sun rays of tomorrow may shine with a new hope of equity and equality. After the incident that changed the perspectives of my grandparents, I am feeling much transformation in myself. It has developed much confidence in me. I can speak up against the mal practices prevalent in our society. I'm also able to raise my voice against the biasness between sons and daughters. I am determined to prove in the future that a daughter can care their parents even better than the sons. I'm even doing it now. My parents are the transforming agents in my little life. Basically, my father inspires me for fighting against the conservative beliefs of the society. And now, I believe this is high time. We all oppose the social evils like gender discrimination by even the children of my age. Now, I would like to end this unending story here with an expectation that the buds like me are not crushed before they even grow their petals and flowers and with a longing that we get to bloom and beautify this earth with our very own color and smell because we are an equal part of this world and the same complementing each other Thank you all for listening to me and paving the way for this story to reach others. My love, respect and good wishes to you all. Thank you.